The Bob Hope Buick Show. Brought to you by the full-size Buick for 61. As fine, as new as you can go. And by the special size Buick Special. From Hollywood, the Bob Hope Buick Show presents Potomac Madness, an original musical starring... Ginger Rogers. Bob's special guest, Terry Como. And one of their confederates. With music conducted and scored by David Rose. This is the White House, Washington, D.C. Not a bad piece of real estate. It's always occupied. The turnover averages once every four years. And this is the year the sign is up. It won't be up long. From every state in the union, tenants are looking for rooms here. This is the most luxurious home in our national capital. And it should be. Its owner, the international dilettante, hostess extraordinaire, maker of kings and presidents, the most powerful woman in Washington, Ginger Money. Freiburger, how nice of you to come. Lord and Lady Kemp, welcome to our shores. Uh, Henry, yes, have you seen Mr. Crooner? Yes, Oh, Perry! <laughs> Perry, Perry, what are you doing here all alone? You got here just in time. I was about to go in for a swim. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I had a date with you tonight, and I come here, you have a meeting at the U.N. But, but darling, I, I have to have these people over. We're, we're starting the campaign tonight. I was about to start my own campaign. Uh, In fact, I brought one of old Doc's pizzas with me. Oh, now, now, darling. Oh, I know. I can't offer you stuff like this. But I could maybe offer you a small little cottage and a few royalties from Hot Diggity and stuff like that. <laughs> we'll have a lot of time together after the election. All right. I'll wait for your call. In the meantime, I'll go and put a few holes in a hunk of Kraft Swiss, hmm? <laughs> you can't leave. They're all waiting to hear you sing. Sing? Ladies and yeah, gentlemen, yeah. Yeah. ladies I and gentlemen, a... I want you to... Uh, I want you to hear my very dear friend. Uh, he's consented to cr sing for us, Mr. Perry Crooner. Oh, oh, oh. Sing, darling. Sing for me. Sing. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now I know what happened to the big party. Uh, distinguished guests, I have invited here tonight a very special person whom I want you to meet, my personal candidate for the presidency of the United States, the Right Honorable Governor Gaylord Goober. Uh, all right, if I tie my mule to the railing. I'll take care of him, sir. Oh, watch yourself. He said, hey, well, hey, hey. <laughs> Man, I got to stop buying the hay in Tijuana. <laughs> hey, Governor, uh, hmm. I should like you to meet my guests. Oh, hmm. good, good. I want to see everything. And after we're through with them, I'd like to see your pigs, too. <laughs> Ambassador uh, Vondazan, may I present Governor Gruber? Oh, nice to see you. You're a foreigner, ain't you, son? Well, I'm nothing against that. If it weren't for foreigners, we'd have to fight with ourselves. <laughs> hey, have a scar. There you are. Now I would like you to meet... Oh, oh, I forgot. You can't vote. I'm sorry. <laughs> now I would like you to meet a very special friend of mine, Mr. Perry Crooner. Perry Crooner? <laughs> Where? Glad to see you, Lum. How's Abner? Well, he... <laughs> 
I heard you bellying up there, bellowing up there on the stage, boy. <laughs> were bellowing up there, and uh, if I was a hog, I'd have come running. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got the snoot for it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, now, he now, dog. Now, I, I want you two to be very good friends. You see, Perry can be a great help to you, Governor, because oh. he has millions of fans. Well, any friend of yours with a million friends is a friend of mine. I want to tell you, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm so diving board. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it was so hot today, I thought I'd put the top up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Very darling, I, I really am counting on your support. Yeah, but look at those beady eyes. How do I know this man is honest? Well, I ain't ever took no money for singing. <laughs> now, please, please, Perry, perhaps if you heard Governor Goober's platform, you might change your mind. Oh, well, now, ma'am, I wouldn't want to bore all these nice folks with any kind of speech. Speech, speech, I just wouldn't want to do that. Speech, speech, I really couldn't go. No force me to do it. I couldn't. I just don't feel like talking, my friends of this great country. I'm, but I'm touched by this spontaneous demonstration. The great, wonderful folks like you would want to listen to humble me. I'm just touched. I really am. That's what I am. I ain't ashamed. I'm plumb touched. <laughs> I ain't putting on no highfalutin airs. I ain't telling you no fancy stories. I weren't born in no ritzy Park Avenue tenement. I was born down on a farm. Just a simple cabin, three rooms and a path. <laughs> my father was a plain, simple man, and my mother was a plain, simple woman. You see the results standing in front of you. <laughs> No, and I got me a platform, a gal down good one. First of all, I'm going to change our tax laws. They is all wrong. Let me ask you a question. Why should Arthur Miller and me both pay the same amusement tax? <laughs> <laughs> you with me, ain't you? I say, I say and I say again, let's take the taxes off the poor and put them on the rich. Oh! Oh! Yeah, that's what I say, but don't let her worry. I'll fix it. <laughs> I know a lot of people are thinking of voting for them younger fellas like Kennedy and Nixon. I tell you, that's wrong. Putting them in a White House ain't no way to keep juveniles off the street. <laughs> <laughs> and in conclusion, I just want to thank you, Swells, for your very kind attention to this old dirt farmer. I just wish my dear mother was at my side to share this great moment with me. Good night, Ladybug, wherever you are. <laughs> Well, I wasn't even it trying at all. It hmm? certainly was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Is the ladies and gentlemen of the press care to ask any questions? Uh, Governor, what are your thoughts on socialized medicine on a federal and state level? Well, uh, we, we, uh, we, uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> What's your stand on federal aid for education? Well, I, uh, I... Anyone care for a vodka gimlet? Uh, how do you feel about foreign entanglement? Well, well... What's wrong with the American girls? <laughs> Hmm. According to those answers, you sound like you're a fence straddler. No, no, I'm not a fence straddler. Let me set you straight. I know what I'm for and what I'm against, son. I'm for motherhood, clean living, and our soldier boys, wherever they may be. And I'm again, forest fires, marijuana, and a titi fly. <laughs> Too handicapped at that. Where did you learn about politics? Oh, down on the farm. You got to know when to push and when to pull. Playing politics, my friends. Playing politics, fellow Americans. Those inauguration rights are for men who won't take sides. Playing politics. If I'm elected, playing politics, I promise you that I. Vote in November, all your rivals are up to well-known tricks. That's well-known tricks. You're a cinch if you're playing politics. 
When did you decide to run for president? That ain't the way it works. You never seek the office. It simply isn't done. The most that you agree to is maybe favorite son. You're out of breath from running while you're claiming you won't run. <laughs> you let the public pick. What are you gonna do for the farmer? We got a farmer's program that ought to be a smash. We'll keep on subsidizing the farmer's corn for cash. We may run out of money, but we'll sure have suck a <laughs> <laughs> We'll have that old suck a tash, I tell you. It'll be right in there. <laughs> Plus, butter, milk, eggs, and chicks, all the play and politics. Play and politics. A board leader. Play and politics. A baby catcher will be. We'll run men in again. again. If you're, you're all thanks to all men. Play and politics. Play and politics. Back to balls is a neighbor. A bad gosh, a gamer. Gosh, a gamer. He's a lot of water mix. Play it smart. Mother's little pets. <laughs> General Motors, 43 and a fourth. Coca Cola, 45 and a half. Polaroid camera. The committee has arrived. Show them in. Gentlemen. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen, what have you to report on our campaign? Governor Goober's getting tremendous press. Look at this cover of Time. Ah. <laughs> Look, magazine gave him a 20-page spread. Why, there hasn't been anything this big since Hula Hoop. <laughs> That's nothing. Look at this. He's been named Playboy of the Month. <laughs> But let's not be stupid about this. The Honorable Governor Gaylord Goober is just my clay pigeon. And when the time is right, I'm going to shoot him down and stampede the convention with my real candidate. It's too late. You can't stop Goober now. I can't. Herschel, six weeks ago, I told you to get the lowdown on Mr. Goober. That is correct. You may read the results of your investigation. His record is spotless. Nothing? No, 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 larceny, no scandal? Madam, Governor Goober makes Mr. Clean look filthy. <laughs> You're beat, Miss Money. If that man ever did anything wrong, he did it while he was unconscious. He's unconscious. That's the answer. Call Dr. Freiberger, tell her I would like to use his office. And, uh, uh get Perry. <laughs> get him back here. I've got something for him to do. Miss Money, you've got something on our candidate? Not yet, but Goober's a man of the soil, and if we dig deep enough, we've got to find dirt. <laughs> right this way, sir. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Well, where's the psychiatrist? Well, the doctor will be here in just a moment, Governor. Oh, you know who I am? Why, yes, Miss Money gave us your name when she called to make the appointment. Well, I ain't touched, you know. All of us candidates have to go through one of these here skull examinations. So don't go blabbing my name around the neighborhood, huh? Just have a chair, Governor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 
it. Oh, there you know, I ain't seen nothing like that since Masao got the itch. <laughs> Well, Fidel, imagine meeting you in a psychiatrist's office. <laughs> On second thought, where else? <laughs> My boy, you got the right beard, but the wrong cook. <laughs> Flagenheim is the name. Dr. Giuseppe Flagenheimer from Doc? Vienna, Italy. Oh, Dr. Flagenheimer, nice. Well, I'm Governor Gaylord Goober, and I'm not a nut. <laughs> Please, I didn't say you was a nut. Now, relax. This is just a friendly little meeting. Lay down. I want to shake hands with your, with your brain. <laughs> now tell me, what did you did? <laughs> what do you mean, Doc? Believe me, everybody has done some down bull thing which they wish they hadn't did. <clears throat> now you did? <laughs> I did everything but you, Doc. <laughs> When the memory is repressed into the depths of the sub subconscious, now we're going to lower a snorkel and have a look. <laughs> ah, but you already got a snorkel. Oh. <laughs> Watch out, Doc, it'll bite you. <laughs> right, now, no fooling around, eh? <laughs> now, was you ever in jail? Oh, lots of times. Aha! What for? Well, I was visiting my father. Ho, <laughs> oh, ho! Also, what was your father in for? Ten years. <laughs> now you're swinging, sweetie. <laughs> I'll put a little cheese on that. <laughs> Why your papa was ten years in the clique? Well, he was the warden. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where I met my mother. Uh, <laughs> she was a prisoner, not? No, a lawyer. Uh, <laughs> she was defending me. Uh, <laughs> now, we're getting someplace. Your papa met your mama, and you was already born, right? Right. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Hey, 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 what are you doing? Hey, I was a doctor. <laughs> I give up. Compared to you, Albert Schweitzer was a, was a beatnik. <laughs> Out. Well, thank you, Doc. I want to say you're a fine head shrinker. And I sure liked to have seen that one before you worked on it. <laughs> I saw him leave. Well, what evil facts did you find out about him? Oh, this is ridiculous. He's a wonderful guy, and I'm going to vote for him. Perry! Oh, I mean it. I feel kind of jerky, you know, pulling a dirty trick on a guy like Goober. But it was for Goober's own good. If there was anything in his past, it's better that we know about it now. Good, because I wouldn't want to do anything to hurt him. Don't you worry, dear. I'll take care of him at the convention. <laughs> That's what I like about you. You're solid nice. You're so right. <laughs> and another thing. Oh, pardon me, sir. Wrong office. <laughs> President by appearing on the convention floor. The pandemonium you are witnessing is the result. And here is Governor Gaylord Goober himself. Governor Goober, would you say a few words, please? Oh, yes, I'd be glad to. Howdy! Thank you very much, Governor Goober. Yes, sir. Take it away, Huntley Pincus. Huntley Pincus? <laughs> How are we doing? Uh, gonna be close, of course. We got the big ones. New York, Pennsylvania, California. Oh, good. Now, the important thing is, which way is Jack Parr gonna go? <laughs> That's a big audience, son. They never get up in time to vote. 
<laughs> now, what about the South? We got Illinois, ain't we? No, no, no. We were outbid. You mean they turned down a bridge across Lake Michigan, a new manager for the Cubs? No, Chicago held out for residuals from the untouchables. <laughs> And I thought this was going to be an honest convention. It is. So far, everybody's sticking to the price that we offered. <laughs> Don't tell I'd you like to introduce at this it. time our next speaker, Governor Gaylord Goober. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I want to say, Mr. Chairman, fellow Republicans, brother Democrats, prohibitionists, Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> I lost my notes. I ain't taking no chances. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we are. Here we are. My task here today, ladies and gentlemen, is to place the name of a great American in nomination. And I might add, this is a first for a political convention, because the man I'm placing in nomination is me. <laughs> Let's have some chair, and you look like you're painted up there. <laughs> now, you know, the present administration, uh, I'm talking. <laughs> hey, my opponents have conducted a ruthless smear campaign. They claim I've received millions in kickbacks from state contractors. If, it, if I did, I ask you, how come it don't appear on my tax return? <laughs> yeah, well, now, if we come to the, to the charge that everybody in the state payroll is a kin of mine. Try to remember, it's a small state, and I got a lot of relatives. <laughs> I explained all that at the hearing. <laughs> I say there's no room in the executive mansion for corruption. We'll have to find some other place for it. <laughs> Now, in final conclusion, I want to mention one other qualification. I'm a bachelor. I'm a bachelor, and being a bachelor means additional revenue. I could rent out all them rooms in the White House that Nixon and Kennedy just be cluttering up with kids. And being a bachelor, we could have payday Gaylord. every... Who there? Gaylord, why did you desert me and the baby? <laughs> Mr. Chairman! You know that I heard you! Mr. Chairman! There appears to be most reprehensible conduct on the part of this here nominee. Oh, honest, I've never seen this baby in my life. This kid's a liar. Come here! <laughs> order! I will have order! This kid's a tourist. A motion has been made for a voice vote on a roll call. All those in favor? Aye! Opposed? No! no. Motion carried. <laughs> Alabama, 11 votes. Mr. Chairman, Alabama, the garden spot of the southern desert, champion of the chitlins, <laughs> cast 10 and a half votes for Perry Kruna, one half vote for Tuesday Wells. <laughs> Here's a frame of I can explain everything. I'm not married. I'm not Alaska married. Alaska, three votes. Oh, I hate a big mouth. Alaska, ice box of the world, outpost of democracy, and first line of defense against Texas. <laughs> Cast two and seven eighth votes for Perry Crooner and one eighth vote for Smokey the Bat. <laughs> Say something, kid. They're railroading me. Chairman! Chairman! What are you doing? Oh, they're blown out of their minds. I'm not running. Goober's our man. No, no, baby, it's you. This is what I've been working for. What? If you love me, let them draft you. Then we can be married and honeymoon in the White House. You mean you're offering me marriage in return for double-crossing my best friend, Goober? All right, so I'll be president. <laughs> Funny thing happened to me on the way to the White House. I move we nominate Harry Crooner 
for president by acclamation. Oh, you're not going to Washington with me. You're going to Las Vegas. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to solo on my first honeymoon. I'm too young to fly alone. <laughs> Just because you're president, you can't let it interfere with your career. Did Truman give up the piano? Did I give up his golf? You know, the White House is no place for a president. It's all right for a visit, but nobody wants to live there. <laughs> but, uh, but what about the honeymoon? Or was it just a campaign promise? You belong out with the people who love you. That's why I've booked you for six weeks at the Desert Inn. <laughs> the lounge or the big room? <laughs> big room, silly. Who ever heard of the President of the United States playing the lounge? <laughs> oh, boy, am I happy. <laughs> That's what I've got. Six weeks for you at the Fontainebleau in Miami and then the Latin Quarter in New York and the Shapery in Chicago, and I've booked you solid for four years. <laughs> like being married to MCA. <laughs> it's only for four years. Bye. Fine honeymoon. Separate planes. My grass. <laughs> Expecting rain? Well, that's what it says right here. It'll be a black day when Gaylord Goober gets to Washington, right here. <laughs> That's an editorial column, not uh, the weather report. Oh, really? Well, we better get on board. I'm not going. You impeached already? <laughs> no, I've got some dates to play. You'll have to take my part as acting president. Oh, well, I don't hardly know anything about being president. I ain't even mad at Drew Pearson. <laughs> now, can you, uh... <laughs> Hey, can you give me some pointers? Like, what, I, what do I do at the inauguration? Play it safe, do two courses, and get off. <laughs> I'm not sure I can handle this. You're a sense, Goob. Look, just think of it. The White House, you'll be sitting in the same chair that was used by Ike. Uh -huh. You'll be sleeping in the same bed occupied by Washington, Lincoln, Hoover, and Truman. Really? Now, what do you say? I hope they change the sheets. <laughs> President of the United States. <laughs> oh, if Ma ever knew I was going to get this far, she'd have sent me to school. <laughs> well, it's right nice of her to keep it warm for me. Well, what are you doing here? Well, ma'am, your hubby appointed me acting president, and I'd like to get in there. Well, the act's been changed. I'm taking over while Perry's away. But, ma'am, that's unconstitutional. We don't have no ladies' day in the White House. <laughs> have you ever heard of community property? Well, I'm the president's wife, and I'm entitled to half interest in this country. No, that ain't the way it goes, ma'am. The country belongs to the people. Since when? Ma'am, if it don't, Paul Revere got them saddle sores for nothing. <laughs> Excuse me, I have some important news. Where's the first lady? She's in there knitting a battleship. 
Mrs. President, the ambassadors are here. The ambassadors? Uh, give me a few minutes and then send them in. I am thinking as I stand here of the women here to fall who hope to stand exactly where I'm standing. And I'm thinking of the men, those puny little men, who claim a dame would find the job demanding. should restrict herself to serving an occasional tea and crumpet. Well, I'm the first first lady who's a real first lady, and if Goober doesn't like it, he can lump it. And when I entertain that smooth Latin they sent me from Spain, Entertain that Britain.
I can't wait until my plans are all unfurled. Just for now, it's the White House tomorrow. The world. This is a crisis. I've got to talk to the cabinet. Well, what do you want from me? Well, you're the secretary of the treasury. Lend me a dime. It's <laughs> $12.30 I've laid out so far. How do I get the money back? Well, start your own country and apply for foreign aid. <laughs> Hello? This is secretary of defense? What? Run down to the bomb shelter and get him. <laughs> No, no, wait. Give him this message. Round up the cabinet. We're all going to Las Vegas for a summit meeting with the president. <laughs> it's an emergency. The country's in terrible shape. No, we tried that. The Indians refused it. <laughs> Operator, I didn't get my number. Can I have my dime back? Gentlemen, the Desert Inn takes pride in presenting the star of our show. The next voice you will hear will be the President of the United States. Uh, this is either, uh, what is this? Is this the remake of Ocean's Eleven? I work alone. <laughs> President, I gotta see you, son. Uh, it's an emergency. Your wife's ruining the country. Mm, what's she doing? Well, when I left Washington, she was giving cha-cha lessons to La Mumba. <laughs> we, we gotta talk to we her. We gotta talk to President, son. We'll, we'll take a shortcut through the casino, right? right? You lead the way, Mr. President, son. <laughs> And furthermore, we got a $7 million deficit, not a nickel in the treasury on top of that cruise ship phone today. What do you want? I don't know. It was a collect call. <laughs> <laughs> Say, can you loan me $2 in case another emergency comes up? Well, yes. Oh, fine. Here's a 10. Fine, fine. Hey, could you break that for me, please? Say, you don't know what your old lady's doing in Washington. She's got my hands tied. Your I... roll, sir. What? <laughs> What's the matter? Can't you see we're having a cabinet meeting? Seven to win it, pay the line. <laughs> we're in big trouble. We floated a new bond issue last week and went down the gangway and sank. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you, boy? What? Seven to win it, pay the line. <laughs> what about the revenue from the post office department? <laughs> oh, it's nothing. They're down to giving away green stamps. <laughs> You're awfully stubborn, fella. Seven to win it, pay the line. <laughs> Well, what happened to all the money in the treasury? Oh, the books don't balance. The treasury's empty. We just found out we loaned $10 billion to the wrong country. <laughs> How'd that happen? Someone forgot to oil the Univac. <laughs> I ask you now. It couldn't possibly. You're getting awfully stupid. Stay on the winner, pay the line. Hey, hey, what are you doing here? I thought you were at the White House. Who's watching the store? But no, darling, I was line. wrong. I thought I wanted to be brilliant, important, an intellectual with worldwide power, but now I realize there never can be another David Susskind. <laughs> now I just want to be at your side. Seven to win it, pay the line. <laughs> Well, sure, you know what you're doing. I was just trying to get change for $10. What's going on here? Is this all ours? One more pass and we balance the budget. Just a minute, wait a minute. We can't cover a bet this big unless we get an okay from the owner of this casino. Well, let's go. I got a hot hand okay, here. Okay, George, let him roll. Yes, ma'am. You mean you own this casino? Yes, and never let it be said that Ginger Money refused to give the government an even shake. Roll them. How about that? <laughs> One more pass, Goof. Go. Okay. Oh. Wait a minute.
minute. Set on the wheel of the table. How about that? Hey! Well, we balance the budget. Yes, sir. How did you do that? Well, this is the space age. I did it electronically. <laughs> Politics make strange bedfellows. <laughs> Where else is the living so fine? Where else can you dine and just sign? Where else can they take what you make away? Where else but the U.S.A.? Where else have they cowboy things? Where else? But they pay them to sing, where else can you yawn and they'll shout hooray? Where else but the USA? They say that things are getting better and getting better all the time. Not worth the getting so good, a dollar's almost worth a dime. Where else can you gamble till dawn? Where else? Are you stoned if you yawn? Where else? And the jackpot that will not break. Where else? Up the USA. Please, just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, as the head of the National Broadcasting Company, and in keeping with our policy of honesty in television, I find it my duty to inform you that this man is not really the President of the United States. And this man here is not really the Vice President of the United States. And this woman is not the richest person in the entire world. Now, wait a minute. Do you have to do this? I'm very sorry, sir, but that's our policy. Honesty in television. Pardon me. <laughs> cast were Peter Lee, Stephen Chase, Milton Froh, Lisa Davis, Charlie Lund, Eddie Marr, J. Edward McKinley, and Herb Bikin. Harry Como appeared by courtesy of Kraft Foods. Bob Hope Buick Show has been presented by Buick, the clean look of action in the full-size Buick, and the special-size Buick Special. See Buick by General Motors at your quality Buick dealer. Watch for the next Bob Hope Buick Show on Wednesday, November 16th from the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs with K-Star Neil Adams and special guest Steve McQueen.
Next week at this time, see Barry Sullivan and Clue Gulliger on The Tall Man, followed by The Deputy, starring Henry Fonda and Alan Cates. Now this is Frank Barton, reminding you to stay tuned for The Campaign and The Candidates, next over most of these NBC stations. This program was pre-recorded. This is the White House, Washington, D.C. Not a bad piece of real estate. It's always occupied. The turnover averages once every four years. And this is the year the sign is up. It won't be up long. From every state in the Union, tenants are looking for rooms here. This is the most luxurious home in our national capital. And it should be. Its owner, the international dilettante, hostess extraordinaire, maker of kings and presidents, the most powerful woman in Washington, Ginger Money. Mrs. Freiberger, how nice of you to come. Lord and Lady Kemp, welcome to our shores. Uh, Henry, yes, have you seen Mr. Crooner? Yes, Oh, Perry! <laughs> Perry, Perry, what are you doing here all alone? You got here just in time. I was about to go in for a swim. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I had a date with you tonight, and I come here, you have a meeting at the U.N. But, but darling, I, I have to have these people over. We're starting the campaign tonight. I was about to start my own campaign. Uh, in fact, I brought one of old Doc's pizzas with me. Oh, now, now, darling. Oh, I know. I can't offer you stuff like this. But I could maybe offer you a small little cottage and a few royalties from hot diggity and stuff like that. <laughs> we'll have a lot of time together after the election. All right. I'll wait for your call. In the meantime, I'll go and put a few holes in a hunk of Kraft Swiss, huh? Darling, <laughs> you can't leave. They're all waiting to hear you sing. Sing? Ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Yeah. Ladies and I gentlemen, I want you to... Uh, I want you to hear my very dear friend. Uh, he's consented to cr sing for us, Mr. Perry Crooner. Oh. Sing, darling. Sing for me. Sing. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now I know what happened to the big party. <laughs> Distinguished guests, I have invited here tonight a very special person whom I want you to meet, my personal candidate for the presidency of the United States, the Right Honorable Governor Gaylord Goober. What's the matter? Can't you see we're having a cabinet meeting? Seven to win it, pay the line. <laughs> We're in big trouble. We floated a new bond issue last week, went down the gangway and sank. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you, boy? What? Never the winner, pay the line. <laughs> what about the revenue from the post office department? <laughs> oh, it's nothing. They're down to giving away green stamps. <laughs> You're awfully stubborn, fella. Never the winner, pay the line. <laughs> What happened to all the money in the Treasury? Oh, the books don't balance. The Treasury's empty. We just found out we loaned $10 billion to the wrong country. <laughs> How'd that happen? Someone forgot to oil the Univac. <laughs> I ask you now. It couldn't possibly. You're getting awfully stupid. <laughs> no. Seven to win it, pay the line. Just... Hey, hey, what are you doing here? I thought you were at the White House. Who's watching the store? But but darling, I was wrong. I thought I wanted to be brilliant, important. An intellectual with worldwide power, but now I realize there never can be another David Suskind. <laughs> now I just want to be at your side. Seven to win it, pay the line. You fellas sure you know what you're doing? I was just trying to get changed for $10. <laughs> What's going on here? This whole 
hours. One more pass and we balance the budget. Just a minute, wait a minute. We can't cover a bet this big unless we get an okay from the owner of this casino. Well, let's go. I got a hot hand okay, here. Okay, George, let him roll. Yes, ma'am. You mean you own this casino? Yes, and never let it be said that ginger money refused to give the government an even shake. Roll them. How oh, about that? Yeah. We need one more pass, Goop. Go. Okay. Oh. Wait a minute. Set on the wooden table. Yeah. 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 How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Well, we balanced the budget. Yes, so how sir. How did you do that? Well, this is the space age. I did it electronically. <laughs> Politics makes strange bedfellows. <laughs> Where else is the living so fine? Where else can you dine and just sign? Where else can they take what you make away? Sing. Where else can you yawn and they'll shout hooray? Where else but the USA? They say that thing. I if, it, if I did, I asked you, how come it don't appear on my tax return? <laughs> yeah, well, now, we come to the, to the charge that everybody in the state payrolls a kin of mine. Try to remember, it's a small state, and I got a lot of relatives. <laughs> I explained all that at the hearing. <laughs> I say there's no room in the executive mansion for corruption. We'll have to find some other place for it. <laughs> now, in final conclusion, I want to mention one other qualification. I'm a bachelor. I'm a bachelor, and being a bachelor means additional revenue. I could rent out all them rooms in the White House that Nixon and Kennedy just be cluttering up with kids. And being a bachelor, we could have heyday Gaylord. every... Who there? Gaylord, why did you desert me and the baby? <laughs> reprehensible conduct on the part of this here nominee. Oh, honest, I've never seen this baby in my life. This kid's a liar. Come here. <laughs> order. I will have order. This kid's a tourist. A motion has been made for a voice vote on a roll call. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. no. Motion carried. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Alabama, the garden spot of the southern desert, champion of the chitlins, <laughs> cast ten and a half votes for Perry Kruna, one half vote for Tuesday Wells. <laughs> Perry Kruna, this here's a frame-up. I can explain everything. I'm not married. I'm not married. I never saw three votes. I hate a big mouth. Alaska, ice box of the world, outpost of democracy, and first line of defense against Texas. <laughs> Cast two and seven eighth votes for Perry Crooner and one eighth vote for Smokey the Bat. <laughs> Say something, kid. They're railroading me. Chairman! Chairman! What are you doing? Oh, they're blown out of their minds. I'm not running. Goober's our man. No, no, baby, it's you. This is what I've been working for. What? If you love me, let them draft you. Then we can be married and honeymoon in the White House. You mean you're offering me marriage in return for double-crossing my best friend, Goober?
passengers for flight 26 to Washington, now boarding at gate 16. This is what I've been waiting for, our honeymoon in Washington. Oh, you're not going to Washington with me. You're going to Las Vegas. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to solo on my first honeymoon. I'm too young to fly alone. <laughs> now, just because you're president, you can't let it interfere with your career. Did Truman give up the piano? Did I give up his golf? You know, the White House is no place for a president. It's all right for a visit, but nobody wants to live there. <laughs> but, uh, but what about the honeymoon? Or was it just a campaign promise? You belong out with the people who love you. That's why I've booked you for six weeks at the Desert Inn. The lounge or the big room? <laughs> big room, silly. Who ever heard of the President of the United States playing the lounge? Oh, boy, am I happy. <laughs> That's what I've got. Six weeks for you at the Fontainebleau in Miami and then the Latin Quarter in New York and the Shapery in Chicago, and I've booked you solid for four years. <laughs> like being married to MCA. <laughs> it's only for four years. Bye. Fine honeymoon. Separate planes. <laughs> I ran. <laughs> Expecting rain? Well, that's what it says right here. It'll be a black day when Gaylord Goober gets to Washington. Right here. <laughs> That's an editorial column, not uh, the weather report. Oh, really? Well, we better get on board. I'm not going. You impeached already? <laughs> no, I've got some dates to play. You'll have to take my part as acting president. Oh, well, I don't hardly know anything about being president. I ain't even mad at Drew Pearson. <laughs> some pointers like what I what do I do at the inauguration play it safe do two courses and get off <laughs> I'm not sure I can handle this come on governor oh you know who I am why yes Miss money gave us your name when she called to make the appointment well I ain't touched you know all of us candidates have to go through one of these here skull examinations so don't go blabbing my name around the neighborhood huh just have a chair governor <laughs> okay <laughs> Oh, dang it, I ain't seen nothing like that since Masao got the itch. <laughs> well, Fidel, imagine meeting you in a psychiatrist's office. On second thought, where else? <laughs> My boy, you got the right beard, but the wrong cook. <laughs> Flagenheimer is the name, Dr. Giuseppe Flagenheimer from Doc? Vienna, Italy. Oh, Dr. Flagenheimer, nice. Well, I'm Governor Gaylord Goober, and I'm not a nut. Please, I didn't say you was a nut. Now, relax. This is just a friendly little meeting. Lie down. I want to shake hands with your, with your brain. <laughs> now, tell me, what did you did? <laughs> What do you mean, Doc? Believe me, everybody has done some down bull thing which they wish they hadn't did. <laughs> Are you big? I dig everything but you, Doc. <laughs> when the memory is repressed into the depths of the sub subconscious, now we gonna lower a snorkel and have a look. <laughs> ah, but you already got a snorkel. Oh. <laughs> Watch out, Doc, it'll bite you. <laughs> right, now, no fooling around, eh? <laughs> now, was you ever in jail? Oh, lots of times. Aha! Uh -huh. What for? Well, I was visiting my father. <laughs> ho, ho! Also, what was your father in for? Ten years. <laughs> now you're swinging, sweetie. <laughs> cheese on that. 
Why your father was ten years in the clink? Well, he was the warden. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where I met my mother. Uh, <laughs> she was a prisoner, not? No, a lawyer. <laughs> she was defending me. Uh, <laughs> now they're getting someplace. You. And furthermore, we got a seven million dollar deficit, not a nickel in the treasury on top of that cruise ship phone today. What's he want? I don't know. It was a collect call. <laughs> Say, can you loan me two dollars in case another emergency comes up? Well, yes. Oh, fine. Here's a ten. Fine, fine. Hey, could you break that for me, please? Say, you don't know what your old lady's doing in Washington. She's got my hands tied. Your I... roll, sir. What? What's the matter? Can't you see we're having a cabinet meeting? Seven to win it, pay the line. <laughs> we're in big trouble. We floated a new bond issue last week, went down the gangway and sank. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you, boy? What? Never the winner, pay the line. What about the revenue from the post office department? <laughs> oh, it's nothing there down to giving away green stamps. <laughs> You're awfully stubborn, fella. Never the winner, pay the line. <laughs> well, what happened to all the money in the treasury? Oh, the books don't balance. The treasury's empty. We just found out we loaned ten billion dollars to the wrong country. <laughs> How'd that happen? Someone forgot to oil the univac. <laughs> I ask you now. It couldn't possibly. You're getting awfully stupid. No. Seven to win it, pay the line. Just, get it. Hey, hey, what are you doing here? I thought you were at the White House. Who's watching the store? But but darling, I was wrong. I thought I wanted to be brilliant, important, and intellectual with worldwide power, but now I realize there never can be another David Suskind. <laughs> now I just want to be at your side. Seven to win it, pay the line. <laughs> Well, sure, you know what you're doing. I was just trying to get change for $10. What's going on here? Is this all ours? One more pass and we balance the budget. Just a minute, wait a minute. We can't cover a bet this big unless we get an okay from the owner of this casino. Well, let's go. I got a hot hand okay, here. Okay, George, let him roll. Yes, ma'am. You mean you own this casino? Yes, and never let it be said that ginger money refused to give the government an even shake. Roll them. How about that? <laughs> One more pass, Goop. Go. Okay. Oh. Wait a minute. Seven to win the table. How about that? Hey. Well, we balance the budget. Yes, sir. How did you do that? Well, this is the space age. I did it electronically. <laughs> Politics make strange bedfellows. <laughs> Where else is the living so fine? Where else can you dine and just sign? Where else can they take what you make away? Where else? Flight 26 to Washington, now boarding at gate 16. This is what I've been waiting for, our honeymoon in Washington. Oh, you're not going to Washington with me. You're going to Las Vegas. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to solo on my first honeymoon. I'm too young to fly alone. <laughs> Because you're president, you can't let it interfere with your career. Did Truman give up the piano? Did I give up his golf? You know, the White House is no place for a president. It's all right for a visit, but nobody wants to live there. But, uh, but what about the honeymoon? Or was it just a campaign promise? You belong out with the people who love you. That's why I booked you for six weeks at the Desert Inn. <laughs> the lounge or the big room? 
big room, silly. Who ever heard of the President of the United States playing the lounge? Oh, boy, am I happy. <laughs> That's what I've got. Six weeks for you at the Fontainebleau in Miami, and then the Latin Quarter in New York, and the Shapery in Chicago, and I've booked you solid for four years. <laughs> like being married to MCA. <laughs> it's only for four years. Bye. Fine honeymoon, separate planes. My grass. <laughs> Expecting rain? Well, that's what it says right here. It'll be a black day when Gaylord Goober gets to Washington, right here. Well, that's an editorial column, not uh, the weather report. Oh, really? Well, we better get on board. I'm not going. You impeached already? <laughs> No, I've got some dates to play. You'll have to take my part as acting president. Oh, well, I don't hardly know anything about being president. I ain't even mad at Drew Pearson. <laughs> now, can you, uh... <laughs> hey, can you give me some pointers? Like, what, I, what do I do at the inauguration? Play it safe, do two courses, and get off. <laughs> I'm not sure I can handle this. You're a sense, Goob. Look. Oh! <laughs> Harry Cruden, this here's a frame up. I can explain everything. I'm not married. I'm not married. I never saw three votes. Oh, I hate a big mouth. Alaska, ice box of the world, outpost of democracy, and first line of defense against Texas. <laughs> Cast two and seven eighths votes for Perry Cruner and one eighth vote for Smokey the Bear. <laughs> Say something, kid. They're railroading me. Chairman! Chairman! What are you doing? Oh, they're blown out of their minds. I'm not running. Goober's our man. No, no, baby, it's you. This is what I've been working for. What? If you love me, let them draft you. Then we can be married and honeymoon in the White House. You mean you're offering me marriage in return for double-crossing my best friend, Goober? All right, so I'll be president. <laughs> Funny thing happened to me on the way to the White House. I move we nominate Harry Crooner for president by acclamation. Oh, no. Oh, you're not going to Washington with me. You're going to Las Vegas. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to solo on my first honeymoon. I'm too young to fly alone. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're president, you can't let it interfere with your career. Did Truman give up the piano? Kenya, California. Oh, good. Now, the important thing is, which way is Jack Parr going to go? <laughs> That's a big audience, son. They never get up in time to vote. <laughs> Now, what about the South? We got Illinois, ain't we? No, 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 we were outbid. You mean they turned down a bridge across Lake Michigan, a new manager for the Cubs? No, Chicago held out for residuals from the untouchables. <laughs> and I thought this was going to be an honest convention. It is. So far, everybody's taken to the price that we offered. <laughs> I'd like to introduce at this time 
our next speaker, Governor Gaylord Gruber. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I want to say, Mr. Chairman, fellow Republicans, brother Democrats, prohibitionists, Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Lost my notes. I ain't taking no chances. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we are. Here we are. My task here today, ladies and gentlemen, is to place the name of a great American in nomination. And I might add this is a first for a political convention, because the man I'm placing in nomination is me. <laughs> Let's have some chair, and you look like you painted up there. <laughs> now, you know... The present administration. Uh, I'm talking. <laughs> hey, my opponents have conducted a ruthless smear campaign. They claim I've received millions in kickbacks from state contractors. If, it, if I did, I ask you, how come it don't appear on my tax return? <laughs> yeah, well, now, we come to the, to the charge that everybody in the state payrolls a kin of mine. Try to remember, it's a small state, and I got a lot of relatives. <laughs> I explained all that at the hearing. <laughs> I say there's no room in the executive mansion for corruption. We'll have to find some other place for it. <laughs> now, in final conclusion, I want to mention one other qualification. I'm a bachelor. I'm a bachelor, and being a bachelor means additional revenue. I could rent out all them rooms in the White House that Nixon and Kennedy just be cluttering up with kids. And being a bachelor, we could have heyday Gaylord. every... Who there? Gaylord, why did you desert me and the baby? <laughs> This is the most luxurious home in our national capital. And it should be. Its owner, the international dilettante, hostess extraordinaire, maker of kings and presidents, the most powerful woman in Washington, Ginger Money. Freiburger, how nice of you to come. Lord and Lady Kem, welcome to our shores. Uh, Henry, yes, have you seen Mr. Crooner? Yes, Oh, Perry! <laughs> Perry, Perry, what are you doing here all alone? You got here just in time. I was about to go in for a swim. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I had a date with you tonight, and I come here, you have a meeting at the U.N. But, but darling, I, I have to have these people over. We're starting the campaign tonight. I was about to start my own campaign. Uh, in fact, I brought one of old Doc's pizzas with me. Oh, now, now, darling. Oh, I know. I can't offer you stuff like this. But I could maybe offer you a small little cottage and a few royalties from Hot Diggity and stuff like that. <laughs> we'll have a lot of time together after the election. All right. I'll wait for your call. In the meantime, I'll go and put a few holes in a hunk of Kraft Swiss, huh? Hey, you can't leave. They're all waiting to hear you sing. Sing? Ladies and yeah, gentlemen, yeah. Yeah. ladies I and gentlemen, a... I want you to... Uh, I want you to hear my very dear friend. Uh, he's consented to sing for us, Mr. Perry Crooner. Oh. Sing, darling. Sing for me. Sing. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now I know what happened to the big party. <laughs> Distinguished guests, I have invited here tonight 
a very special person whom I want you to meet, my personal candidate for the presidency of the United States, the Right Honorable Governor Gaylord Goober. <laughs> Uh, all right, if I tie my mule to the railing. I'll take care of him, sir. Well, watch yourself. He said, hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Man, I gotta stop buying the hay in Tijuana. 